Miles Morales, a different take on possibly the most iconic superhero ever made. Ever since 2011, he's infiltrated the media through his various comics, innovative films, and even his own video game, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales for the PlayStation 5, released November 12th, 2020. Because after 2018 rectified what it meant being Spider-Man, Insomniac took it a step further, introducing a new Spider-Man with his own story to tell in a game that, in my opinion, isn't very good. Now you may be saying, well, Loli, you can't go not liking a game like that. You're gonna get jumped. And it's to that I say, I don't hate this game. It just doesn't taste that good. I've tried it boiled or fried. It just doesn't work. And in case of any misconceptions, I'm gonna loiter around this mall constructed out of cardboard while the spider boys are near. No shot they'll get through this. <laughs> And off he goes, swinging fluidly through the city. He meets up with Peter, who I heard accidentally ate his phone this morning. That's when you gotta watch a box. I hope nothing goes wrong. Oh no, oh sh the box broke. Shit goes south, the rhino breaks out and lets the goons loose. Let Pete take on rhino while we take him to church. Hit him with one of these, hit him in the crotch. Launch that guy into his friends. Jump off and get him with a downward bitch knuckle sandwich. A web kick. A web, just get him with a web. Stick him to a truck. Chase Peter and rhino through the city till they crash into a, into a mall. Oh shit, no, 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 wait, wait. He got through the mall, absolutely wrecking the streets. Rhino charges into explosives. He's causing a scene. Spider-Man's got a plan. Wait for the pieces to fall into place. Fight some more goons. Get him with the... Oh my god, Spider-Man got slumped. This is where Miles has had enough. Now it's time to jump his ass. Hit him with the electric punch. Just let loose, and I mean really just go to town. Just keep going and going like it's never enough. Then the troops arrive, led by bootleg Zuckerberg, and he says, Wow, now that, <laughs> that was incredible. I'm gonna have fun sending the troops after you later. Pete takes you to a roof and says, You know what, Miles? You really did good out there. I really enjoyed looking after that box today, so I thought I'd get you this before I hit the road. And remember, Miles, mm, I fucking knew he ate the phone. And with that, we've got the first mission of the game. I very much like it. It shows off the student-teacher relationship between Peter and Miles, foreshadows the next villain, and gives us a taste of those new Venom powers, all in a super cinematic fashion. It tosses you right into the action, showing you everything that made the first game so damn good. The huge city, the incredible graphics, the mechanics, the soundtrack, it's all still great. It all still makes you feel like Spider-Man. Like you're running around on a rooftop, hopping from thing to thing. Sound familiar? You jump off the roof with the exaggerated swagger of an overdone joke into a skydive. The music sporting a more hip-hop-esque beat cues in. You web onto a building, mere inches from the ice Icy streets when they hit you with the bum, 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 bum. So now you're swinging through New York, smoother than ever, further elevated by the new trick system and two new additions to keep your swing going. About to crash into a building? Nope, you do a venom jump to hop over that building entirely and keep that momentum going. Chasing a bad guy and miss a quick turn? Nuh uh, you actually used a venom boost to make that sharp turn and keep the momentum going. Both these do a decent job at distracting from the fact the web swinging hasn't changed much, if at all, from the original. Like, one of the biggest complaints people had with the first game was the web swinging being too automated, controlled, or limited. I've seen the comments, people really wanted to see this improve, to see it evolve. Take a riskier approach to swinging, more akin to Spider-Man 2. Could the swinging be better? Yeah. Could the floor be gone? Yeah! The web swinging in Miles Morales is still fun, even more so with the newly added animations. I just know people wanted to see so much more. And that's not the only thing I wanted so much more from. There's also, you might want to grab an umbrella. The story. So I hope you've played this before, because the forecast said there was a strong chance of... Spoilers. This game's story. Yeah! Why is it so short? There was a two-year gap between the release of Spider-Man and Miles Morales. The first game was in development for four years. This game took half of that. Obviously not much time was spent on the web swinging, so maybe they compensate with a big meaty story. So let's check up on it. So you see my problem with this game? The city's in danger. Why is it in danger? The underground. You gotta go stop him. Finn tells you to fuck off. Why is Finn being a bitch? It's because she's the leader of the underground and wants to troll Roxxon. How'd she do that? Steal some silly canister and weaponize his domestic terrorists to rain terror on the city. Why target Roxxon? Blow up a bridge to find out. Turns out Roxxon is under the control of bootleg Zuckerberg who kills people for- And Finn wants revenge on him for killing her brother. In doing so, will accidentally blow apart in New York. Oh, and also the, the Prowler is there. This game needed way more meat on its bones and better quality meat at that. Cause what the hell is this Dollar General microwave minute meal of a story? Like we barely get to see Pete and Miles together in this game. After the first mission, he's gone, just like that. It could have been fine the story was so much shorter if the writing wasn't such a step down as well. The characters, Krieger for example, briefly touched on him earlier, kills people for-
He's the main villain here, a typical greedy businessman willing to take lives for the big bucks. Yet he's got less depth than Lord Business from the Lego movie. Take the main guy from the first game, Doc Ock. He had everything stripped away from him by Osborne. That's why he goes rogue and releases a deadly virus on the city. What's Krieger's shtick? Next up is Finn, Miles' longtime best friend, part-time moron, lost her brother to Roxxon and wants to avenge him by taking down Krieger. That setup, while generic, is not bad. But let me reiterate, she goes about this by weaponizing domestic terrorists and allowing them to wreak havoc over the city. The city that Krieger doesn't care about, that'll show him. Then we've got the Prowler. He's not even much of a villain here. He wants to protect Miles from Roxxon while subsequently being entangled with Roxxon himself. However, his presence here does not amount to much. I feel like he should have been established in the first game, so that it makes sense he's just up and about. As it stands, he kind of feels like a shoe in to me. And then of course, the main man himself, Miles Morales. This little, uh, this little guy. He'll say and do some of the stupidest things here. You'd really think Insomniac would know how to write these characters, but j just take a look at this scene between Finn and Miles. Come near me again. I'll kill you. But we're family. Who says that? There's multiple occasions where Miles straight up lies to Finn's face, yet he continues to expect her trust. He saw Krieger's whole ass plan. He could have taken a photo and showed it to her, but no. Remind her about the family. Game graphics. They're great, but not necessarily better than what we had. Okay, so Miles Morales was a launch title for the PS5 that released on last-gen hardware that same day. Because of this, they couldn't evolve the visuals that much, because remember, this still has to run on hardware from 2013. So I'll be honest, on a visual level, I see almost no visual difference going from the original to Miles Morales. Alright, obviously there's different set pieces, the city being covered in snow and all. The game still looks incredible, but so does the original. It's just not as impressive the second time around, I'm sorry. But there are a few pretty big changes exclusive to the PlayStation 5. Most impactful is ray tracing. All these reflections really add to how beautiful the city looks. 2. 60 FPS. Both Spider-Man games are great at 30 FPS. But 60? I don't want to go back. And 3. The almost complete eradication of load times. Makes all these transitions a hell of a lot faster. These features were great distinctions that put Miles Morales a step above the first game. Until they all got added to the original in the PS5 remaster. Listen, there's probably more differences like, oh, you could play in 4K. Like, I thought the rats were cool before, but now? He wasn't made for this! Alright, not much for graphics, or the story. So how does the gameplay shape up? It's exactly the same as the first game. Follow the yellow marker to progress the story, follow the other markers to not. You hear about a crime in the area via the new Spidey app. Can't ignore it, so go do your job. Downtown's got heavy traffic, so uptown we go. On the swing there, let's talk about what's new to combat. Some new Venom moves to mess around with, and... That's it. So alright, let's hop on down, slump a few goons, charge up this meter, and get out my face! Feast on a knuckle sandwich! This one's on the house! I won't wait to get to the street! Jack more like left stupid! You really had to go down! Together we rise! the pledge. These are fun, no complaints. Only other change to combat is really minor. Instead of filling up a meter to get a finisher, you get one for every 15 hit combo. Okay. Alright, so let's say you're in a pinch or tired of the usual wham bam. Without the gadget wheel. And... <sighs> these just don't hit the same. They replaced all the ones from the last game and divided the variety at our disposal, which really did a number on the amount of possibility. Next up, let's talk about stealth. What the f*** did you do? Listen, the stealth wasn't the deepest in the last game. It was really basic, but I still thought it was fun. But here? Where's the... They messed it all up! Now, no matter what, if you hit one enemy, all the other enemies are alerted for no reason! You turn invisible to disengage. It's like slapping a band-aid on a broken leg and calling it a solution. The leg's still broken. Oh well. As soon as you smack someone, everyone's alerted. What's the plan? There never was a plan. Venom dash this guy. Me another in the face. Dodge a punch and get this guy with the one-two. Send one off the roof. Slap him in the head. Punch, slide, punch, then hop up, punch him again. Venom jump and bam. Use a gravity well, then jump up and pick him off in the air. Venom punch that guy. Let this guy friendly fire his friend. Throw him into a pile of pipes. Hold another into a support beam. Hit a guy with his own hammer. Get this guy the electric binky. Venom jump and toss that guy into a wall. Take down a few with a remote mine. Hit him with a pipe. Tell him to come here and then toss him. There's still tons of possibility in this game. It's still crazy enjoyable to mow down enemies, and the additions, while minor, are still really fun. Alright, let's check out the side activities. Maybe these will change my mind. Man, we are really not eating good tonight. Spider training! A bunch of challenges for combat, traversal, and stealth. This game's version of the Taskmaster challenges. These challenges are definitely fun. I like how you have to complete specific ones to unlock certain skills in the tree, but they're just Taskmaster challenges, like we've seen these before. The sound sampling! Miles' uncle has you sample sounds from around the city to put together a beat. It's a fun side objective that's not derivative of anything in the first game. The song was... Not great, but I enjoyed the journey. Time capsules. Miles and Finn put a bunch of them around the city. Go find them. Collecting them gives you a trinket and a line of dialogue. Isn't that just something? The underground caches. They're scattered across the city. Collecting them gives you tech tokens. They feel so unimportant, I couldn't bother collecting them all. Of the side activities we've got, some are cool, but most have no incentive past helping you unlock suits or subpar stat boosts. I'd even say suits were better in the original, because at least there, most of them came with unique suit powers. 
Spiders, which are now nowhere to be seen. I feel like I've made my opinion clear throughout this entire video. I'm just not a big fan of Spider-Man Miles Morales. This was the first PlayStation game I ever played. I got pretty far into it till I got sidetracked playing the first game, which I absolutely adore. And despite playing Miles Morales first, I have way more fond memories playing the first game, which I think just goes to show how, in my opinion, this game doesn't hold a candle to the original. Yeah, I realize Marvel Spider-Man is flawed, but it did so much more right and set groundwork for future games. A sequel is supposed to improve upon the original, yet every issue people had is still here two years later with a $50 price tag. And that is such a letdown. Insomniac had the chance to follow up Marvel Spider-Man with something greater. Instead, they rushed and followed it up with what feels like, I hate to say it, an expanded DLC to the original. And if you look at it as a DLC, all the issues make that much more sense. Because it's not a DLC's job to innovate the same way a sequel would. This should go without saying, but I don't mind that people enjoy this game. I'm glad that others can see past all its flaws like I could with the original. And hey, while all the flaws with the original may have carried over to Miles Morales, I'm sure that the second game will properly address every issue I and many others had and make a truly flawless Spider-Man video game experience. I shouldn't have made that bet.